Hi guys, this is Valentine and welcome to another GitLab CI tutorial. This time I'm going to show you how you can connect from GitLab CI to a server, in this case using SSH, and this is a server that's hosted on EC2 at AWS. The first thing that you want to make sure is that you can connect to the server by yourself. So I already have here generated the SSH key. So if I open a terminal, I can show you that I can connect to the server. And it's important to ensure that at least on your machine, everything is working properly before jumping to GitLab CI. So the command itself is quite easy. I'm going to specify here the private key that I'm using. This is the username and this is the address of the machine that I'm connecting to. The connection works, so the next step that I will do is to jump in through the htdocs folder and take a look at its content. So what we're going to try to do from GitLab CI is to put here some files and see how it works. I've already prepared here a pipeline and it's quite simple. It contains two stages, a build stage and a deploy stage. What I'm doing in the build stage is pretty simple. I'm creating a public folder and putting an empty index HTML file and putting some content in that file. After that, I'm going to take the entire public folder and zip it and publish everything as an artifact. So pretty, pretty simple. Now in the deploy stage, this is where things get interesting because typically you want to do two things when connecting to a server. You either want to transfer some files and second of all, you may want to execute some commands. So for that reason, this example of deploy shows you both scenarios. So let me Make this a bit bigger so that you can properly see. So the image that I'm using here is Alpine and this is because it has a small footprint and executes very, very fast. Now by default, Alpine doesn't come with an SSH client. So this is why I'm using the Alpine package manager to add the SSH client. Of course, if you're not using Alpine, you may have to run a different command depending on your flavored Linux system to add the open SSH client. Now the next step is to run the SSH client, so practically to start it. After that, I'm using here an environment variable. This is the SSH private key, and I'm adding this to the OpenSSH client, but practically to the agent that is managing the private keys. Additionally, there's a folder that's required here, and I'm setting it to the right permission. The private key, I have set it in settings, CICD. And if you go to variables, you'll be able to see that I have a variable called ssh underscore private underscore key. You're free to name your variable as you would like. The contents of this variable is the private key. In the case of AWS EC2, it is the contents of the PEM file. So just in case you're wondering, in my case, this looks something like this. And don't worry, this will be invalid by the time you see it. Going back to the configuration itself, this was all in the before script, so this is all the setup that is needed to get this to run. Now the script itself does the following. With scp, I will transfer the public.zip file to this server and this folder. So the folder will be home bitnami hd docs. Additionally, I'm setting a setting here, strict host key checking. I will link you in the video description what that means and what that does, but this is required in order to get it to run. The same goes with SSH. So far we have transferred this file to the server, but nothing has changed. The next step is to connect to the server using SSH and to run a few commands. So the commands that I'm running here are just to demonstrate how you can run commands on the server. So I'm switching to this hddocs folder. I'm creating a new file just to show you how to create a file. And then I am unzipping the public.zip file. Now, this is quite typical because what you will usually do, you'll have an artifact, you'll have an archive. You send that archive to the server, maybe unzip it. And probably inside that archive, you may have an installation script or something like that. So this just shows you how you can transfer files and how you can execute commands on the server. Let's run this and see how it works. So the pipeline needed only a few seconds to execute. The build job is not that interesting, so we'll take a look at the deploy one. And here we'll be able to see everything that we have done. So there's nothing spectacular. What's important to notice is that 
there are no errors and then if we go back to our console we can inspect to see if everything worked properly. So let's see again the contents of htdocs and then you will see here there's another public folder. There's still the public.zip folder and the foo.txt file. And then checking the server. This is the root of the contents and then if we put in public we'll get the file that we have deployed, the index.html file that we have deployed. So pretty pretty simple, we haven't replaced the entire contents of htdocs, it wasn't even the point, but just to give you an idea on how to do something like this. Going back to the configuration, there are still a few things that could be improved. For example, you should never put inside your configuration files the server or usernames or IP addresses, anything like that. Use variables for that, it keeps the configuration files much much simpler. I hope this tutorial was helpful and if this was the case, give this video a thumbs up. Check the video description because inside there I will post a link to the code that you see here so that you can play with it and understand how everything works. If you're interested in learning more about GitLab CI, I have an online course explaining how to create continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines using GitLab CI. So if you're interested in learning this fantastic tool, make sure you check that out as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the section below. I would love to hear back from you if this was helpful and if you're interested in more tutorials about GitLab CI. Until next time, have a good one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.